guys and welcome to episode 5 of the Ultimate Ultra Build Series where we're taking a 2018 Road Glide Ultra and turning it into actually a cool young man's bike. If that sounds like something you're interested in, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now because we put out these episodes as often as we can and we will be until this bike is completely done. But now to catch you up on what happened last time. So I realized after watching I didn't do a very good job of explaining why we kind of just gave up at the end. Aside from the fact that we spent, you know, six, seven hours and didn't get nearly as much done as we wanted to. So you guys saw that we got the wheels and rotors put on. Basically what happened, see what had happened was when we put it on the forks, we were having issues with the brake tolerance. Brake tolerance being basically, it was hitting the pads when it should not be hitting the pads. And we thought about it and we figured out, or we thought we figured out that we have two coats of powder on the wheels because the red and the black, and we also have a coat of powder on the forks. We thought that must be the issue, right? So uh, we took a Dremel, sanded off all the powder on all the surfaces that should be contacting each other and tried it again and we were still having the issue. We adjusted the forks with the wheel off and we still had the issue. One of my patrons, uh, Wet Banana, actually suggested it might be that I shaved off too much metal while using the Dremel to get the, the powder off. That makes sense, because you're talking about two machined finishes. I brought that theory up to uh, Super Dave, my mechanic, and his buddy, who by the way, in case you saw another guy in there, that was his buddy. Uh, he didn't want to be on camera, he didn't want to be mentioned, so I wasn't just being a dick and not introducing him and not getting him in shots, he didn't want to be in it. So, uh, But I asked him that, and they both said there's no freaking way. Uh, you'd have to get at least a 16th of an inch off and with a Dremel and a sanding pad to take 16th inch of a metal off, you'd have to really get at it. So he said, there's no way that was it. He just texted me this morning saying he thinks he has one more idea that should work. So fingers crossed guys, I wanted to get this bike on the wheels and back up on the lift last episode. So we're a little bit behind, but I mean, that's just part of the bell guys. It's just, it's just what happens when you're doing these kind of things. If it was easy, everyone would do it. So uh, first I gotta get everything out of this damn garage so we can get some room and then it'll be time to get to work. So, after probably, what, about six hours in total, <laughs> the front wheel is good. Uh, we weren't really able to pinpoint what the, I mean, we were able to pinpoint the issue. Uh, we ended up having to add a washer on this side. There are no spacers on this side of the ABS. I even went back and checked the footage. There was no spacer here, but that one little spacing was what was causing this uh, tolerance to be off. So, I mean, you could see how far we were off. That's definitely not something that I had, Definitely was not me sanding that caused that because that is, that's a good amount. So anyways, the wheel is good. The wheel is centered. Everything is working properly. Uh, now we just gotta get everything tightened up. But uh, first we're going to put back on the rear wheel and get it back on the ground and hopefully get it up on the lift today. Yep, he's the star. Back from the update, uh, that only took forever. That back wheel was just a pain in the ass, just flat out. There was nothing wrong that we did, there was nothing wrong with powder coat, it's just a pain in the ass. That's basically what we found out. But the bike is now on wheels, or should I say has wheels, it's still not sitting on wheels. Uh, we are going to try to get it onto the wheels right now, but uh, we had to get the bike back into neutral, which was fun, considering that uh, 
We don't have any sort of gear shifter. And uh, we also don't have a kickstand. So upon investigating the kickstand, there's more powder coat that needs to be knocked off. So this whole shaft right here needs to be uh, taken down, as well as this side of this piece right here. So back to the Dremel. I feel like the best words to describe this is so close, but yet so far. But I figured the best thing I could do is kind of start at the front and just work my way back. So first thing I'm gonna do is try to get the rest of this front end put back together, which should be fun since I didn't take any of it apart and I've never taken one apart before. So putting it back together is gonna be just uh, kind of winging it. <laughs> But with us focusing on the front end, that does mean that I get to put on these bad boys. These are the Ciro 3D lighted fork lowers. Uh, these things right here are actually lights. So these are gonna go on the bottom of the forks, they clean everything up, and these actually light up uh, amber and they also flash with the turn signal. So I'm gonna focus on that uh, since those have to be wired up into the fairing first before I start buttoning everything up. And then I'm gonna start buttoning everything up.
All right, I'm done for today. Sorry, I was kind of just like bouncing around there at the end, just putting random shit on without explaining what I was doing, but I was just trying to get as much done as I possibly could because we're like three days in of doing like six hour days and I felt like nothing was getting done. So I just started throwing shit on, trying to get as big, as big of chunks as I can to at least make it look like we got things done. But I'm pretty happy with what we got done so far. Um, let me just go ahead and recap what we did today. All right, so we started off with the front wheel. As you can see, everything it was uh, mounted and finally got uh, true and everything. We installed these uh, Ciro 3D uh, lower lighted lower fork covers. I think they look absolutely awesome. That's probably my favorite mod we've done on the bike so far. Um, we also put on the red grills as well as the blackout dots here on the calipers. Uh, we will be doing uh, custom Biker Bird logos on these at a later date. Uh, got the fender on and we also got the fairing and front turn signals mounted. It's not really a true fit as you can see some of the holes. Well, I guess on this side we're all right. On this side we're a little off so I'm gonna have to do some more adjusting on that but I just kind of threw it on there just to kind of see how everything was coming together. After that we moved back to the tour pack. Uh, I know I show this angle which shows a lot of red and doesn't really look good but uh, that's not a sight you're really gonna be seeing. You're gonna be seeing it more from this angle which uh, in my opinion looks really good plus this a lot of this bike will be getting wrapped so I know the factory color you got the gold in there it's not really working yet but trust me it will look good when it's done. We got the quick detach on the bottom. We also attach the uh, the newly powder coated rack up top, along with getting the bags with the custom inserts put on as well, with the uh, red levers up back behind it. And uh, I know people are going to be asking about the handlebars. We will be changing these bars, guys. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me. These are not staying. We will be getting black bars. We will be getting 14 inch clockworks, uh, clip hangers, they're just backward right now. So literally the first pair they're getting in is coming to me. So as soon as they get some in, I will get some in as well. On the next episode, we will be uh, getting that newly powdered shift linkage connector put on as well as the floorboards uh, along with all the foot controls. And then from there, we're gonna be able to put the exhaust back on and then get to do some performance upgrades. So in case you missed the last couple episodes, what I'll be doing is putting the stock exhaust back on, getting you guys a baseline dyno as well as a stage one without a tune as well as a stage one with the tune. That way you can compare the three numbers and see the performance upgrades on each portion of that. But until we get those parts back, we're kind of, uh, not dead in the water, because there still are things we can do, but I feel like those would be better for the other episodes anyway. So that's gonna do it for today's episode. If you like this video, please hit that like button. If you haven't already, go ahead and punch that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time.